Hey, it's time for VoiceOver Body Shop Tech Talk. And it's Tech Talk. We're almost at 100. Number 99. 99 episodes. When we have st first started doing this, and where we split it off and started doing just Tech Talk, that was, it, it seems like it was yesterday, but apparently it was like 105 plus years ago. Yeah, this was a long <laughs> time ago. Yeah, but no, it's been here. a great time. What a it great is. run. Yeah. If you've got a question for us about your home voiceover studio problem, piece of equipment, question about technique or how to do something, throw Should it in the chat room right Should now. Should you upgrade? Do you really yeah. need to upgrade? Do you, do you really need to do that? Well, we'll see. Anyway, that's coming up. Are you ready, George? I'm ready to go. Let's go. It's time for Tech Talk with VoiceOver Body Shop right now. Tech Talk. Brought to you by VoiceOverEssentials.com, the home of Harlan Hogan's signature products. Source Elements, the makers of Source Connect. VoiceOver Heroes, become a hero to your clients with award-winning voiceover training. VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your voice actor website doesn't have to be a pain in the butt. VoiceOver Extra, your daily resource for voiceover success. And World Voices, the industry association of freelance voice talent. And now, here's your hosts, Dan and George. Hey there, I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Woodham. And this is VoiceOver Body Shop. Or V-O-B-S. Tech Talk. Tech Talk. Tech Talk. Tech Talk. Tech Talk. Tech Talk. We and need to get is, Jeff on just to get him to say that. I know. It's, it was fun, fun when we had him. We were in the studio together. We had a, <laughs> it was great to have him there with us. Yeah. We'll get back into the studio again pretty soon. Yeah. Like, yeah. like next week. Uh, <laughs> anyway, but we're going to see all these people at VO Atlanta and we'll have already been there. So. And we'll see who comes home. It was not great. Sick. It was fabulous. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we had a great time at VO. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, again, if you've got a question about your home voiceover studio, now would be a great time to throw it into the chat room because that's what George and I love to digest is your questions and your problems, because we take your problems and take them elsewhere, uh, hopefully to the right place. But, you know, at least not where you are right now. You know, I was thinking about this the other day. You know, we're always helping people with their home voiceover studios and the questions and the comments that we get from people. Uh, it just reveals how little good information there is out there. A lot of misinformation. Somebody is like, you know, they were a voice actor for a year and they're like, I use this microphone. You should too. Well, what gives them the, you know, the authority to do that? Uh, and, and, or you know, one of my favorites, I'm using a DBX 286. A. Why? I'm using an RE20. Why? Who told you to do that? There is just How long were you in radio? Yeah. <laughs> That's you know, what I yeah. always ask. <laughs> and, and what station did you steal that from? Yeah. Um, anyway, so you want to get the right answers. You want to be able to make sure that when you're starting your home voiceover studio or improving it or upgrading it or you know, moving and you want to get it right, you need to talk to the two guys that have more experience at this than anybody. Some guys, are, yeah, they're audio engineers. Yeah, you they give you what they do. And the fact of the matter is, is if you've never done it, you're not going to take the 20 years to learn what it was that they're telling you you should do. Instead, how about two guys that actually know how to explain it? We make the complex simple, which, by the way, is the definition of genius. Um, is that true? Take, yeah, take that as a compliment. You know, like, <laughs> okay, all right. <laughs> if you want to work with us, if you want to learn from the guys that actually know what it takes to make your audio sound the way it's supposed to you can work with us and if you want to work with george who has more services than one can count and he's trying to shove them all into one website where do they go they go to george the dot tech yes we have a lot of services because we've broken it down by software so we've got a growing panel of experts including dan um that can be booked on our website and they're all broken down by expertise. So when you're looking at a service on 
how to get up and running with Adobe Audition, you're only going to see technicians and, you know, tech coaches who know that software very well. And you're going to see their availability. So you can immediately pick the right people, pick them on the time that works for you and instantly book it right through the website. We've spent a month getting it tuned up and running on the new platform. It's been quite a journey. We're still fine tuning things. It's kind of like a car that's not quite warmed up yet, but it's you can feel the power coming on. Um, and we're really excited. So that's George the dot tech. The site is chock full of information and resources. So thank you. And Dan, your website, you beat me to the, you beat me to it. You got your your new website up a few months before mine, and you're over at I'm over at Home Voiceover Studio. Dot com. That's right. That's what it says. Uh, yeah. And I've got, you know, I don't, I don't do a lot of the kind of stuff that George does. I, I primarily teach and consult mm -hmm. and a lot of people who are beginners, like, what do I do? All right, let's look at what you need to do. And, and then we go from there. There's no one size fits all answer to uh, a home voiceover studio. Every room is different. Every voice is different and, and how to do it right really depends on you because i look at your lifestyle how does where we're going to set you up affect everything else you do and because it's a home voiceover studio so if you want to work with me go on over to homevoiceoverstudio.com if you've got your studio set up and you want to get an idea of how good your audio is or how bad it is um <laughs> you'd be amazed at the stuff i hear uh, you can go over to the homevoiceoverstudio.com and click on the specimen collection cup and uh, read the instructions and submit it uh, your audio to me for $25. I will give you a very thorough analysis of what is going on with your audio and, uh, and how to correct it. Or if it's really bad, you know, <laughs> if, if anybody who's worked with me knows, I will ask a lot of questions and figure out what is going on with your stuff and then we fix it. And then you don't have to worry about your technology. You just hit record and be a voice actor, which is what I want you to do. Anyway, enough of that, even though we like promoting what we do, because that's what we do. Uh, it's time for George's tech update when, when he talks about all this new crap that's coming out and has so much to do with voiceover. And, you know, if you're a gearhead, yeah. But. There's lots of different things going on out there, and George keeps track of it. So what do you got this week? Yes. Well, uh, the first thing out of the gate is the thing I can't talk about, which makes me crazy. Don't talk about it. <laughs> I can't talk about it. <laughs> but by the time this airs, I maybe I can talk about it. It's complicated. But at, well, hopefully at VO Atlanta, I'm gonna be, I'll be able to announce a new audio interface product that I've helped co-design um, and... I'm I'm really excited. This is something I've wanted to see come to light for over 10 years. So it's it's exciting, but I can't I can't say exactly what it is and who's making it until we ink the contract, which is gonna happen any any day now. We have it in the inbox. Just it's the problem with a group of people designing something. It everything takes four times longer. But we're gonna be able to announce it at VO Atlanta and by the time you see this. It'll probably be public, but anyway, uh, I'll, okay, moving on. <laughs> um, next up, I think that I maybe have mentioned this. Dan, did I already talk about the Rode NT1 fifth generation? We talked about it briefly last okay. week, you know, I, and people are asking me about this. Is yeah, it well, it's got, it's got a lot of, a lot of buzz for good reason. First of all, it's, it's $250. So it's, it's $20 cheaper than the fourth generation Rode NT1. What, oh, that one, does yeah. not have a built-in 32-bit float AD converter, right? So it's a real head-scratcher that it's actually less expensive. I don't even understand it. How Are they ever going to sell another NT1 fourth generation? I have no idea. But the fifth generation's out. I'll, I'll tell you this about Rode. They do a really good job, I think, of explaining their products with their videos on their site or on their YouTube channel, check out the Rode YouTube channel. Watch the videos that where they explain 32-bit float recording with the NT1. And it was it was a great demonstration. It, it kind of bends your brain when you're recording engineers like us. And you know that clipping is bad, right? You cannot record audio 
where the waveform goes beyond zero in the conventional sense, right? This product breaks that convention. And now with, with the Rode NT1, when you use the USB um, interface, there is no more needing to set gain. So that means sometimes the levels are gonna be low, sometimes the levels are gonna be extremely high, like literally clipping, <laughs> like wave right off the edge of the screen, right? And you're just gonna think this, ru this audio is ruined. But because of this 32-bit float technology, trust me, go to the website, read. I am not going to bore you, not even gonna dream of boring you with the details about 32-bit float recording. But check out the website and watch their videos explaining how this technology works. And what actually happens is if the waveform goes above zero, you can take the entire clip and just normalize it. And that's it. <laughs> no more clipping, no more distortion. The audio is just corrected at the levels that you, uh, you know, optimal levels, and it's done. So um, needless to say, 32-bit float's gotten a, get a lot more buzz lately, and this microphone definitely has put it in the limelight because of its affordable price point. It's built in. Um, yes, you will plug into a pro audio interface, which I think is the way most of you still will want to use it. But this sec secondary functionality of being a USB interface with 32-bit float is kind of interesting. And if we all learn how to kind of work with it and use it, we might find it to be the ultimate mic for recording video games and animation because no longer do you have to worry about clipping at all. Clipping. Yeah. So this is a really interesting new tech and we're just, we have to figure out how to work it into our production workflow and see if it's really the way to go. I, I'm still a little skeptical, um, but with those videos I've seen from Road, I'm starting to become a little more convinced. Yeah. Um, I, I can't wait yeah. to try it myself. I think I'm going to buy one and give it a shot. It's at that price point where it's it's something you could just say, you know, I'm just going to buy one because right. at 250, that's a pretty reasonable price. And it's also, you know, it's still a what they consider the world's quietest studio condenser mic. That's a tall order. It's very close to a couple others, but at 4 dB self noise, it is an incredibly quiet mic. It's a very clean and accurate mic, and um, geez, there's very hard to find to really fault with that mic. So yeah. even if you're never going to use the US, use the USB to have that in the mic as a secret weapon or a backup or throw it in your bag plug it in when you travel is a is a compelling thing it's really interesting yeah um yamaha has had the ag03 and the ag06 mixer audio interface gadgets for a really long time i remember seeing them at nam uh, may, maybe 10 years ago and i was really impressed well they've since released the mark ii versions and they're just all the better now i set up one for a client last week and it impressed me it was clean no noise, et cetera. Well, they've, they've decided to take that same form factor of the OG AG03 and the 06 and grow it up a bit to the AG08. And what makes the AG08 interesting, I don't know. It's, I think it's kind of less about the hardware and more about the sound drivers. And, and again, I haven't seen it long enough to dig in and really understand exactly the way the sound drivers actually work, but if I was to dare share my screen, which of course, because the browser tab is on the wrong browser, I can't share it easily. Let's see if I can fix that real quick. I'm gonna put this browser tab over on this browser. Boom, and then I'm gonna go back here and share that tab. There we go. So here's the AG. 08. So it kind of looks like an AG06 or 3, just with a lot more stuff going on. More buttons. There it is. More everything. Hopefully you're seeing that. Yeah. We are. Yeah, excellent. So yeah, it's an it's a interface. It's still it's fascinating. And I, I think this is an interesting choice from Yamaha. It still only has two microphone inputs. So what they've done here is where if you're looking at the Rodecaster Pro which has four mic inputs. The Tascam uh, competitor has four mic inputs. The Zoom has four mic inputs. They decided to say, look, the vast majority of people producing podcasts are not doing them in person, right? Maybe they're lucky enough to have one co-host, but mostly, mostly, it's done remotely. And so what they've done is baked in a lot of capability for 
having multiple streams of audio coming in remotely. So it's got multiple USB, I'm assuming sound drivers or channels. This is the part I'm not clear about. I have been throughout the show, uh, in the last show, reading this website, trying to wrap my brain around the audio routing portion. It is not entirely clear to me yet exactly how it breaks all these channels down. Minuses, so they don't create all these circular loops. I don't know yet, but if it does it the way I'm thinking in my head they did it, it could be a killer tool. But we'll have to see. It's pretty expensive at 630 bucks. Well, they, I don't know what this extra 831 price is. That's the made up full price, I guess. <laughs> um, but it's it's pretty pricey compared to what the Roadcaster Pro Two does that Dan has, or the actually Dan has the one, one. but the two. Yeah has uh, even more capabilities. But here's the thing. What I like about it is that it doesn't, It's what I like about it is what it doesn't have. It doesn't have an LCD, I'm trying to make that one size. <laughs> um, it doesn't have an LCD screen, right? So that means it doesn't have a tiny little menu and a million touchscreen buttons and lots and lots of things to get lost in underneath the hood. It's all physically on the face of the unit. And I am really big into hardware that gives you that kind of access to all of its features right on the face of the unit. And that's why it's kind of expensive for what it is. It's more expensive to have a lot of buttons and switches and buttons that light up and all this kind of stuff than it is to just have a single touch screen. So anyway, that's the OG, AG08. If you're interested in, in getting into more of an interview podcast or live stream scenario, and you like the uh, Yamaha stuff, I do. This is something you guys might check into and take a look at. Moving on, um, Audio Technica. One of my favorite audio, one of my favorite headphones for studio use. Um, the ATHM series. They have the M50. That's kind of like their, that's their like, you know, this is our Magnum Opus headphone for studio use, right? I think they maybe have one above that with like leather and some other you know, really high upscale features, but the ATH M50 is definitely a, uh, what do you call it? A benchmark headphone. It's just extremely, extremely popular. Well, what they've done was they've added a headset microphone boom to it. And not only does it have a boom microphone on the headset, it's, I understand the actual same capsule from an AT 2020. So now you've got a really good sounding, great, studio grade pair of headphones with a entry level studio microphone built right into the headset which i think is really impressive um do you, do you think it has the same electronics as the the at2020 i don't know i i saw <laughs> i saw a reviewer who claimed that it's the same capsule as the at2020 i didn't see that on the website so that's some kind of proprietary knowledge i, I can't verify that for myself but that means you've got a good, decent quality condenser capsule on a headset mic. And I think now that's going to allow a headphone mic to become more useful. And I would say for sure audiobooks or really long form stuff where you want to be able to physically move around and have a little bit more comfort in your, in your work without having to be in a microphone sweet spot uh, all the time. The mic's already, already in the right spot. So I, I'm really curious about it. At $200, it's a pretty reasonable, you know, the headphones without the mic are $140, $150, I think. So it's pretty fair. And they also, they also have a USB version. And frankly, for me, that's probably the one I would get because I'll use it with my laptop whenever I'm doing Zoom sessions and everything else. So it's very compelling. And it's the ATH M50 XSTS. Oof, what a mouthful. Um, but uh, check that out. It's got XLR and it's got quarter inch uh, XLR for your mic and quarter inch for your uh, headphones. Very interesting little product. SSL has a driver now for the SSL 2. It used to just be plug and play. Now, there always was a driver for Windows, but on the Mac side, plug and play. But now there actually is a driver you can install for the SSL 2 which adds a loop back. But unfortunately that loop back is not the kind of loop back that we need in voiceover for playing back a take. This loop back is really meant to be a way to record two additional tracks of audio 
coming back to your computer. So it would be perfect for someone who's a voiceover actor and wants to dabble in some podcasting because now you can record the return from Zoom or Riverside or Source Connect or whatever the remote end is on, and it'll record it onto additional tracks in your DAW. So if you're using Adobe Audition multi-track, you can have your mics on one and two and your guests come up on tracks three and four. And that can help in production, getting a better mix and all that. And that is just built in now. It's, it's just a feature that you can add at any time by upgrading the driver. And that's cool. I, I like this trend of hardware companies adding a feature just by giving you an update. Now, I get really nervous about firmware updates. I'll be very honest. When things go wrong with your equipment, I, I've got one right here on my shelf. When things went wrong with my equipment that drove me absolutely bonkers on more than one occasion, it was because of firmware updates on this little guy. And, the, and that's why it's sitting here on the shelf because it pissed me off after, <laughs> after a couple of times. <laughs> you put it in the timeout. And I'm back on my Apollo, <laughs> which uh, certainly isn't immune to firmware updates, but I've never had it create completely unreliable performance. So anyway, firmware makes me nervous. So if you're going to try a firmware update, make sure you know how to roll back if you don't like it and never do it in the middle of a critical, critical production time. Okay. Lastly, from Audio Technica, also, I mentioned this to Sue because she was looking for a good little mic headphone, uh, not headphones, but speakers to use just like as a utility speaker, not for mixing records, just a little thing. They have the ATSP 65 XBT speaker. Now, it looks a lot like many of the other USB portable speakers. It doesn't look all that special, right? But it's an Audio Technica. So I would think that it has a pretty decent natural or realistic audio reproduction but important to most of us it has an actual line input jack it's not just bluetooth so you can plug that directly into your studio rig and and use it as a convenient way to do just a quick edit without headphones or do that punch and roll style recording uh, also you know without headphones so um, it could be a good little companion for those in a small cramped booth type space all right, that's it for tech cool. update. Dan? All right. Well, that was an awful lot of stuff, though. Greens? I know. I came in saying I don't know what I'm going to talk about. And sure yeah, enough. There's <laughs> always something to talk about. Always something. Yes. So I, here's something I want to talk about. Um, I think I'm going to start calling this segment Dan's Basic Basics. Sure. <laughs> because it's, yeah. we're, you know, generally I'm going to talk about stuff that is, you know, it should be blatantly obvious you, to you but because there's so much misinformation out there and uh and everybody's got their own way of doing things i figured let me at least give you my take my years of experience and and on technique and doing voiceover and recording and fixing other people's stuff mm -hmm. you can trust me i hope anyway let's talk about pop screens um you know, they make great fly swatters, except, you know, the, the, the arm on it can be a little flimsy and stuff. You see so many pictures of, of voice actors, you know, and, it, and if indeed they are voice actors, because a lot of them, if you type in, like, looking for pictures of voice actors, they're all singers. They're all got headphones. There's a, and they're really working the mic really tight like that. That's great if you're a singer and you're trying to be, like, you know, maybe not like Adele who tends to really belt out stuff or say someone like Billie Eilish who talks like that you know, or sings like that. Yeah, I may be old, but I still like Billie Eilish. So anyway, pop screen, what is it for? Generally, when people ask me, my standard answer is it's to prevent Celine Dion from spitting on a $10,000 microphone. Uh, they make them. And the fact of the matter is, Again, like most equipment that we use in voiceover, it's not designed for voiceover. It's designed for making music because voice actors have to be, you have to sound like you're at an actual distance from somebody. When they're doing music, whether it's rap or pop or, you know, whatever, when they've got singers working in a recording studio, they may be working the mic really close and they want to have something that's going to protect the mic and perhaps prevent plosives. But as you can see, this thing, Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers 
it sort of helps. I'm of the opinion, and I've, I've been roundly criticized by numbers of people for this, but they're wrong, uh, including my agent who wrote in, uh, in Facebook a couple of years ago. He says, there's some idiot out there saying you don't need a pop screen and <laughs> went into all of this stuff. Up, you know, maybe it'll help that hitting that. Um, and, and I'm like, my agent is saying this about me. And so I immediately texted him and I said, what are you talking about? Why would you go out there and say, I'm telling people something stupid like that. And he's like, no, no, I wasn't talking about you. It's somebody else. If I was talking about you, I would have said some walrus faced doofus was saying this. So he may have been talking about me and he didn't want to insult me, but there, look, there's lots of different techniques to how you use a microphone. You'll notice that I don't use a pop screen. You'll notice that, well, George has one on there, but it's more for decoration, I think, than anything else. Uh, spit guard. It's a spit guard. It's a spit guard. Okay. Because that's an expensive microphone. Those are our and it says on it. That's right. We, we had those made a few years ago, and uh, they were great for... for they the, were for a the specific epi- microphone. The, the Apogee mic. It's right. The Apogee mic, right? Which, Which is, is a plosive magnet. It is, it is not a very forgiving microphone, for sure. Anyway. To me, it's all about mic placement. I can go Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers on, you know, in perpetuity, and I will not get a plosive. Nobody complains about plosives. I, you know, I, I, my recordings have no plosives on them, and I don't use a pop screen. Why do I have it set like this? We've talked about, about mic technique many, many times. And, but if you have it, the, the mic upside down like this, why people say, I got to do it right, right side up. This again, it gives you free view of your copy. You can move your arms and you have the mic at the top of your periphery, your upper periphery, and you can talk and not think about being on a microphone. Whereas this guy reminds you that you're on a microphone and is very distracting and reminds you that you're a voice actor and you have to talk a little bit louder which isn't even true. Psychologically, I say, take your pop screen and again, use it as a fly swatter. Um, and, uh, you know, how many people do we know that have made them out of pantyhose? <laughs> you raise your hand. Um, the fact of the matter is, unless you're really producing music and you're like doing some heavy vocalizations and stuff like that, you really don't need a pop screen. Uh, I think one, one reason you might, is if like, if you're using a 416 for doing promo work, which very few of you are doing, you might want to have one on the end there. And then there's those foam things. Everybody's like putting foam things on their microphone thinking, oh, it's a windscreen. It'll stop me. It's called a windscreen for a very specific reason. And that is for using it outside when there's wind, you know, cause you'll get otherwise so there's no such thing as a pop screen it is something to protect your microphone now you can all write into me and say you're full of baloney but guess what the proof is in the the placement (laughs) and the The proof is in the placement (laughs) your thoughts mr widom yeah no the proof is in the placement it is really all about mic placement um yeah, there's no doubt some mics are really, really plosive sensitive. Others are not as much. Um, it's interesting. I, I'll, I'll, tr- I'll preach the same thing to my clients all the time with like a TLM 103 or whatever. And some of them still manage to pop it. I don't really know how. I'm not physically there with them usually. I don't know if they move their head a lot. I don't know if they have a, a tendency to lean up towards their mic. But whatever it is. Some people still catch the occasional plosive, as was happening with me with this uh, this OC eight one eight. So for me, this little very very unobtrusive pop screen was was helpful at catching those. But I would never use this as a substitute for mic placement ever. It is just I look at it as a spit guard, just like the Celine Dion thing. Dan said it's just a spit guard. Um, to catch something flying out of my mouth and not hitting my $1,200 microphone capsule. Um, and that's the way I look at it. You don't want anything that's obscuring the mic, making it larger. God forbid a big round foam ball 
that makes the mic the size of a, a soccer ball. Now you have to work that mic instead. What a nightmare. Really? You want you want something unobtrusive and doesn't get in your way. And pop screens get in the way most of the time. Yep. Absolutely. All righty. We got a ton of questions tonight, and you have no idea how happy that makes us. Because it makes the next half hour even easier. Anyway, we're going to get to all your questions, and there's tons of them. Uh, again, if you want to throw one in there, please do in one of the chat rooms, because we are on Facebook Live, we are on YouTube Live, and now we're on LinkedIn Live. And I know somebody's watching because somebody on LinkedIn sent us a question or a comment or something like that. We're everywhere. So stay tuned. We'll be right back with your questions here on Voice Over Body Shop Tech Talk. Don't go away. This is Ariana Ratner, and you're enjoying Voice Over Body Shop with Dan Leonard and George Whittem. VOBS.TV. Have you noticed the specific demands of clients regarding our home VO studios? Are they at a professional level to record for broadcast? And what does that mean? To me, it means it doesn't sound bad. I've seen several now demanding cardioid condenser microphones. Some are great, and cheap ones not so great. So how do you choose? It's like standing in the checkout line at the supermarket deciding which candy or mints you want to buy. So which is right for you? Make it easy on yourself and get the Harlan Hogan Signature Series VO1A, the first and only mic designed for voiceover performers by a voiceover performer. The VO1A faithfully captures deep tones without sounding bassy and has a silky smooth top end that's never harsh. A perfect sound palette for both male and female voiceover performers. Order yours by May Day and you'll get an ABS strap free to protect your mic from oops. Go to voiceoveressentials.com where you'll see all their great products made just for us voiceover people. Hey, everybody. Now's the time where we get to thank Source Elements because they support our show. Still, years and years later, we thank them because of the consistency and the success of their main product, Source Connect, which has been set up in studios now. Let's see. The first time I set up Source Connect... <sighs> I think it was for some voice actor promo folks who wanted a backup or a way to extend their studio when they were out of town, but still wanted to connect to ISDN. So my friend Steve made this thing go to an ISDN to Source Connect Bridge. I think that was 2006. The rest is history. Source Connect has been consistently used for a very, very, a very long time. And that consistency and track record has made it a tool of choice for producers around the world. Yeah, it's not free. It is not free. But here's the deal. The reason it's not free is because of the support and servers and the technology behind it that make it work as well as it does, right? It's not just about creating a clever product, a magic box, or a very free or inexpensive software. It needs support. And that's what they give you. Source Elements support is fantastic. Really, really is. They know their products and they know a lot of the things that you're using too. So they can answer some basic studio questions as well if you're really stuck. So get set up at source-elements.com. You can get a 15-day free trial. You can even just get a two-day license for that occasional gig. It's really not as unaffordable as you might think. Thanks so much. We appreciate their support. Let's get on to those questions right after this. Right, so I've taught thousands of people how to be successful at voiceover. And before I start teaching them, I always ask them, what is it about voiceover that makes you frightened or keeps you up at night or stops you from doing it? What are your concerns about voiceover? And more often than not, what I hear is accents and dialects. I'm not good at them. I don't know how to do them. I don't know how to build one from scratch. I don't know whether what I'm doing is good enough for professional VO work. I get it. I absolutely get it. And I've, I don't teach accents and dialects. Um, and I've never found a class that I could recommend to people that was really fantastic until now. When I saw Jim Johnson teach a sample lesson from the Accents class, which he and Dan O'Day have put together, I, I was just blown away. Amazing. It's, a, it's creating a toolkit that lets you build any accent you want from scratch. And they're great. Like, I, I do pretty well with accents and dialects. I'm going to take this class. I'm not just going to recommend it. I'm going to be in the class as a student, right? And I'm not getting it for free. I got a pony up just like everybody else. You want to take the class with me? I'd love to have you. And I've arranged for a discount if you act fast. So go to the URL you see on the screen, voheroes.com slash accents. 
and register for the class. Do so before Tuesday night. You'll get the $300 discount if you mention my name in the comments box on step three. So when you get to step three, there's a comments box. Just say, hey, I love David. I want to take the class with David. I want to sit next to David in the class, whatever. Mention my name. You get a $300 discount if you act before Tuesday night. And I'll be right there in the class with you. I can't wait to see you succeed at Accents and Dialects. Videoheroes.com slash accents. And I'll see you in class. Hi, this is Bill Farmer, and you are watching Voice Over Body Shop. It's great. Yes, we are back with Voice Over Body Shop Tech Talk, the stuff you guys love to hear about. Now, so at Voice Over Atlanta, we, you know, people are always coming up to us and asking all sorts of questions. And I use this and I use that. And we generally come up with the right answer because the answer is something that is something that we've probably dealt with before. But we got a lot of questions tonight. Uh, some of them are kind of left over from last week with uh, uh, with Scott Brick. And uh, we'll start off with uh, Patricia Andrea. She says, I want to give audiobooks another try and would love to know how, how Scott organizes his files. Organizing files is not a big deal. I mean, it's just number them. And keep them in the folder with that particular project. Um, and, and then she's to ask what format are there? And are there any presets that you recommend? She uses an Apollo solo in twisted wave, but planning to switch to Adobe audition. Good idea for audiobooks. Twisted wave is great for audiobooks because it doesn't take up a lot of resources of your computer. So you can go on and on to do a half hour chapter or 45 minute chapter uh, in an audio book and it, it doesn't affect the computer. Of course, computers now have so much memory and, and are so fast. They can, they can generally handle just about anything. Adobe audition is again, I, to me, it's the standard for what you would want to use for audiobooks or any voiceover recording. It's got the only workflow I think for, uh, uh, for voiceover. And, and so use it that way. And, uh, you know, somebody told me that I don't want to pay the 20 bucks a month. I'm like, then use audacity. If you're going to be cheap, <laughs> you know, it's, it's worth it. It's totally worth it to have something like Adobe audition, but you know, yeah, I mean, I, I, I teach workflows for recording audiobooks from, from soup to nuts, um, on Adobe audition and twisted wave. And mm, those are the two main ones. Audacity. Yeah. That one too. And yeah, you can use either. Um, Twisted Wave works fine. It, it is all about file organization. Um, it's about storing all of your raw takes in one folder, your pickups in another folder, your edited comps or your final edits in another folder. Um, you know, you, you just put things in folders, stay organized as you go, and you'll always have redundancy because you've saved copies of your files as you go along. What people like about some uh, more sophisticated DAWs, digital audio workstations, is their non-destructive editing, right? So what they're doing is they're always keeping a copy of literally everything you record, no matter what you do. Um, it's always stored and it's fine. The thing is there's more file and data management that's required with those because it makes a lot more files. It fills up your hard drive faster and there's a more, it's a steeper learning curve to learning how to work with these non-linear non-linear editors, non-destructive editors, I guess I should say. And so it, there's a pros and cons to everything, but um, I think Twisted Wave is still quite viable for audiobooks, and I know a lot of folks that do use it for that. In terms of processing presets, um, I, that's something I do. Like I set up processing presets specifically for whatever you're doing. So if you're doing an audiobook, and if you need to do the mastering side of things, check that out at georgethe.tech. I have a whole thing about audiobook mastering and I will set it up on whatever platform you're using, depending on your DAW. In terms of the Apollo Solo, the processing I would use for an audiobook is literally just a high pass filter. That's it. <laughs> I wouldn't use any processing at all. I would set the gain so that you're not even close to clipping, hit record a 24 bit wave file and you're good to go. You don't need any special settings on the Apollo solo itself. Good. Yeah. And that's the thing is what the Apollo is for is it, 
it gives you all those plugins and that's why people buy it because I mean, it's, I mean, it's made by, by universal, uh, audio and there's, mm -hmm. they make great stuff. It's, you got it's it. reliable. It's yeah. complicated. It looks, the thing about it is it looks unassuming, right? Friendly little box with a knob and a few buttons. Yeah. <laughs> it, dri it drives people crazy getting to learn how to operate the thing. It's got a very complex software audio interface, a software interface that goes with it. It's, you know, if, if you use it for nothing more than basic audio recording and playing back in your headphones, you paid too much. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Scarlet, Scarlet will do that. Fine. Uh, you know, for a quarter of the price. So just make sure when you're buying one, make sure I understand why you're buying it and then get some help to get it optimized for your use case. Otherwise again, it is definitely a big waste of money. Yeah. I mean, it's. You know, having great equipment is, is worthless if you don't know how to use it and having it doesn't make you sound better. It's knowing how it makes you sound better and what you do with it. So mm -hmm. every time someone says, yeah, you got to use this great piece of equipment, think about it and go, is this something that is going to change the way I read copy? And it's not, uh, if you've got your setup, right. You can be using a microphone that is not $500 or an interface that's eight hundred dollars or six hundred dollars you can go a lot less and it will sound the same believe it or don't uh okay well carrying on here christine dunford asks george can you give us your opinion of waves clarity plugin thanks i don't use any of this stuff you know, yeah waves what? clarity is for when you're recording in in crappy environments so no. You've got noise that you can't stop today because you're just extremely unlucky that your deadline is today. And this is also when your neighbor is putting in a new sewer system. <laughs> or a pool. Or... <laughs> or a pool. And there's <laughs> machinery and jackhammers. and Or you're traveling and you're trying to pull off something that you, you know, normally shouldn't or be, shouldn't be able to do. Um, because you're in, um, an invert urban environment, you're in a city and you can hear car horns. Well, waves clarity is probably the best, arguably the best audio processing tool at removing that kind of noise. You know, it, it can do the kind of noise removal that nothing else can do at this point, pretty much across the board because it can remove those random sounds and do it almost perfectly, like eerily good, um, at doing that and it's because it's using a neural network which is a sort of a form loosely of, of ai technology and so yeah it's pretty good if you want to learn a lot more about it i've got numerous classes about waves plugins including the clarity plugin um that you can learn a lot more about it and see it demoed over at george slash webinars check out the stuff about waves i have a lot of content about waves plugins but the clarity plugin it's pretty impressive, especially if it's still 29 or 39 bucks. It's kind of a no brainer. If you know, you're going to have to deal with situations where the noise is going to be really, really killing a gig. You know, it's like, I, I got no choice. I don't have another friend's studio. I can go to on a short notice. I'm traveling. And if I don't get this job in, the client's going to bail and I'm, I'm in Italy and I have to record in the middle of the day or the middle of the night. Who knows? That's, that's, that's what this tool is for. I would not make it part of my everyday processing. It's a, it's a special sort of secret weapon. Yeah. You know, if you live in a noisy place, you know, otherwise try and isolate yourself as best you can. Yep. Uh, this is, this is an interesting one. Uh, George, could you demonstrate, I might be better at demonstrating this. How to use twisted way to edit a video clip. Oh, that I haven't done specifically how to cut and paste room tone over a click or a pop sound in the video, please. Thanks. Um, well, I didn't get a chance to prep, so I don't have a video hand. Well, I'm sure I could pull one up, but maybe if you want to go to the next question and I could prep for this while the next question's being dealt with, and then maybe I could pull off demo demoing it. Okay. Well, Gloria Mason Martin asks, or she says, I've been in my studio since 1999 with Owens Corning 703 on the walls, hopefully covered up. Uh, a sure KSM 32, a wonderful microphone and, uh, an interface with SoundForge since the beginning of time. In other words, she's a PC person. 
Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm now getting ready to move. And what are some things to watch for in a new space and keeping the KSM 32? That's not too tough. Look for a place with a walk-in closet, not an 18 inch sliding door closet. Uh, those are by far the best things to have one, because you can close the door behind you and actually move. Uh, and, and two, especially if it's an interior closet that doesn't have an outside wall. Uh, that gives you insulation from all the outside noise. It doesn't stop all the noise from inside the house, but, uh, it can help a little bit. And, uh, the KSM 32 is just a great microphone. It's going to hear a lot of stuff, but if you isolate yourself really well, that does a whole lot to improve your sound on the back end. So, uh, look for a place with a deep closet. Uh, I've been working with some people that have had some great closets to work with, and we've had fantastic results with that and using stuff that you wouldn't think of, you know, it's like, I don't want to spend a whole lot of money. Do you have any duvet covers? Do you have any heavy curtains? And we've used them and it sounds just as good as any one of the studios. If you do it right. Heavy, massive. Yes. Yes. You know, go, go to Goodwill. They've probably got some old drapes sitting there. They may smell a little weird. <laughs> But that's what Fabrice <laughs> Yeah, watch out for the smell, but you know. <laughs> okay, you're, you're going to help Jeff Holman now with this question about using video in Twisted Wave. You got that set? Yeah, I think I have a way to do this now. I'm going okay. to I'm going to share a window, and chances are it's only going to show that uh, the main Twisted Wave window and not the video window. Yeah, you guys don't see the video window. I knew that was going to happen. Maybe I can try sharing it one different way. See, there's a video. This is a video right now. That's what I have open on my screen. It's a video. But it looks in Twisted Wave just like a regular audio file. Because, you know, what I'm doing here is, let's see, can I do a window? I can't do a selection of a window. I have to do the entire screen, which is a massive screen. Oh, okay, fine. I'll do it. Screen. I'll do All it right. anyway. Entire screen. There we go. And then I'll just make this bigger. Ah, there you go. That works. All right. There's the video window right there, right? So I've taken an M4V file. That's just what uh, literally the first video that came up. And it looks like this. So the video file is floating right over the audio file. Um, when I hit play, you're going to, you may not hear it because I don't think I have the routing set up yet. But if I did, you would hear the audio. Let's see. There it is. There they are right down there blowing. And I can't hear a thing. That's a client of mine <laughs> boasting about his <laughs> how soundproof his studio is, which is always, you know, it's always a good feeling when you get someone telling you how good the studio sounds that you designed. So, okay, so this is, this is not the greatest example, but what he was asking was, how do you do the room tone paste technique in a video? Well, it's, it's the exact same technique as if it was, just an audio file, just that there happens to be a video attached to the audio, right? So if you want to replace something with room tone, let's say you want to remove that door sound, right? And so you want to select this piece of room tone over here, copy it. You want to select the room, you want to select the thing you want to magic erase, right? The door sound. And you want to use special paste. Just make sure special paste options are correct. Should be on replace check all the boxes and make sure attenuation is all the way down. And now when you hit command Y, it will replace the length of the thing you don't want with the thing that you do want, which is that piece of room tone, right? Which doesn't, so, which doesn't interfere with the sync of the video. It doesn't screw up the sync of the video. Exactly. And in here. Now he's breathing in that room tone. You can hear him go, so that would be bad room tone. You would not want to paste <laughs> a breathing room tone over and over, but you get the idea. That's all it is. Once you have a, a clean room tone sample copied, Command Y will let you paste over and re like there's a little click sound there. Yeah, I'll just magic erase that with room tone. Dude. Right? It's just it's just gone. So that that is that's how you would do it. So it's just special paste. Just yeah. with the video. Now when I go to save this, file save as. 
it's just going to save it in the same file format that the original was in. I can convert it if I need to, but I don't necessarily have to, and I don't have to mess with any codec settings. Just save, give it a new file name, and move on. That's it. All right. Yeah. I mean, there's other ways you can do that as well. I mean, in, in editing the, you know, uh, in, in, in Twisted Wave, but that's, mm -hmm. that's an interesting feature to have that, you know, in Adobe Audition, you can throw in a video window and you can completely sync things up that it's, it, it's really yep. fabulous. Yeah. Uh, you get the next one from Max Goldberg. All right. Um, what mic is George running into the Apollo and is there any EQ or processing on the signal? It sounds nice and full. Well, That's thank you. Because George is nice and full. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, I had a nice big Neruza lunch today. So yeah, that helps. Um, yep. I am processing and you know why? Because I'm doing a live show and I want to sound as good as I can. Um, so what am I doing exactly? Well, this is an, o an, Aust an Austrian audio OC 818 multi-pattern large diaphragm condenser mic. Um, it's running in hypercardioid, so that gives it a little bit more of a, a richer, fuller sound. I don't quite have the pipes of Dan, so you know, getting all the help I can get. Um, and then I'm going through uh, API Vision Channel Strip, right? That's a plugin that has a compressor, a high-pass filter, a, uh, an expander, and an EQ. Right. So I'm running through all of that. If I turn it all off, then I sound like this, right? This is with zero processing whatsoever. Oh, a whole lot different. And then if I turn off the LA-2A, which is also kind of like a lift in the shoes, turn that off. Now that's off. So now that is truly flat now. So that is mic, Apollo preamp directly into the system completely. That is all it is. The thing that sounds funny in my headphones is I think when I'm using that processing, it changes the way I sound in my headphones in a dramatic way. And I don't know if that's from phasing or what it is, right? So when I turn off all that stuff, I sound a lot different to me. Hmm. Um, but I may not sound that different to you guys. You'd be the judge. Sound, you sound like you, which by the way is what you're supposed to sound like. <laughs> right, exactly. Because yeah. we don't talk to people through all that processing. And if they're trying to capture you right. naturally as you exist, you don't use all those things. But I mean, I, I like it because it does let me be a little lazy. I can get loud and never clip, but doesn't distort. I can speak more softly and it will bring up the, the quieter stuff. It allows me to be a little more lazy on the performance side because I have so much processing in there to level things out. I'm also using the expander to hide the fact that I'm not in a very quiet room with aircraft and vehicles and other crap from my neighborhood and my building so i'm doing everything i can to clean up the audio and that's uh that's the magic sauce that i'm using all righty we got time for one more question because it's the last question that's here in regard it's from ed moskowitz in regards to the 32 float discussion we're talking 32 bit i imagine in film and tv post and production it has been debated for quite a while with manufacturers like sound devices Having the option many of its studios, the option many of its studios were perhaps that has changed now, not capable of dealing with the 32-bit float. So the question is, one, what is he talking about? I think most of you are going, what? Yeah. So the question is, are more Pro studios... Proofread your questions, guys. <laughs> yeah. Before you uh, send them. Yeah. Are, are more studios now ready to utilize tracks recorded in 32-bit? In production at this stage of the game... A lot of filed recording of effects are done in 32 bit. Your opinion. Uh, 32 well, bit is, yeah. Mm. Well, you take part of this and I'll. Well, I mean, we don't, out. Dan and I don't produce, right? We're not right. doing the actual production. A little bit here and there. Yeah. Yeah. But we're not like in a production workflow for TV film, right? <laughs> so we don't know what exactly. is needed. Right at that stage of the game. But yeah, it is all about workflow. And if it doesn't fit into their workflow, they're not going to use it. When will they adapt to using 32-bit float? I have no idea. I mean, your deliverable, the file that you're going to send to the client ain't going to be 32-bit float, right? <laughs> it's purely a capture and process format. It is not a deliverable format. You're going to send out a 16-bit 48K or 44.1 wave maybe a 24-bit wave for some of the more picky producers like the video game companies 
and that's it. that's it for the for foreseeable future um that's all i gotta say about that i don't i don't know <laughs> i don't know anybody who has 32-bit float audio in their production workflow yet so don't know yet edward that is a good question yeah so we'll find out all righty well that does it for questions this week a lot of good ones and uh we really appreciate it you know you can get to the front of the queue if you actually, if you have a question during the week and you're like, maybe you can't make the show uh, when we do it live every other week and you want to ask us a question, you can write to us, you know, like typing on your computer and type us an email to the guys at VOBS.TV. And if you write it in, I put it first in the queue for questions and tech talk next week. Can I so, make a correction yeah. real quick? Because Jeff caught sure. something and I didn't catch exactly. it because I was... I was focusing on the audio, right? So that whole special pace thing I was doing, right? In Twisted Wave. Well, <laughs> Jeff was paying attention. He noticed that what happens is when you do that special pace, whatever room tone is that you copy and then you paste it later, the video goes with it. So, Ooh, so now you are pasting in that clip of video over and over and over again, which is... No bueno. Don't do that. So, um, so that's a, that it's a very good question. It's very relevant. And it's from, as far as I can tell, not yet possible to do that exact technique with video. That's, that's a great question, Jeff. I, I hadn't even tried it until we did it right here on the show. I wasn't watching the video, so I didn't see it. Thanks for, thanks for noticing that. And it's a good question for, um, Thomas. Re yeah. Absolutely. Send him an email and say, here's a workflow I use, and I'd like to be able to resolve this. How can I do it? Um, and he's he loves to make his tools better. And this is not a free tool, by the way. The, the video function is not free. It's a it's a forty or fifty dollar upgrade to Twisted Wave. So he would be especially uh, open to hearing, I would say, some feedback on that. Um, whereas if you're in a multi track system like Adobe Audition multi track with video. That would not be the case. It's it, actually it would, a lot easier in audition. Yeah, it would not be the case. So that that is a good point to. That's one of the things where you're going to be feeling a little limited with Twisted Wave for editing video. Absolutely. All righty. Well, that's all the questions we have. But we have a little bit more to talk about when we come back on Voiceover Body Shop Tech Talk. So don't go away quite yet. This is the Latin lover narrator from Jane the Virgin, Anthony Mendez, and you're enjoying Dan and George on the Voiceover Body Shop. Your dynamic voiceover career requires extra resources to keep moving ahead. There's one place where you can explore everything the voiceover industry has to offer. That place is voiceoverextra.com. Whether you're just exploring a voiceover career or a seasoned veteran ready to reach that next professional level, stay in touch with market trends, coaching, products, and services while avoiding scams and other pitfalls. VoiceOver Extra has hundreds of articles, free resources, and training that will save you time and help you succeed. Learn from the most respected talents, coaches, and industry insiders when you join the online sessions, bringing you the most current information on topics like audiobooks, auditioning, home studio setup and equipment, marketing, performance techniques, and much more. It's time to hit your one-stop daily resource for voiceover success. Sign up for a free subscription to newsletters and reports. It's all here at voiceoverextra.com. That's voiceoverxtra.com. In these modern times, every business needs a website. When you need a website for your voice acting business, there's only one place to go. Like the name says, voiceactorwebsites.com. Their experience in this niche webmaster market gives them the ability to quickly and easily get you from concept to live online in a much shorter time. When you contact voiceactorwebsites.com, their team of experts and designers really get to know you and what your needs are. They work with you to highlight what you do. Then they create an easily navigable website for your potential clients to get the big picture of who you are and how your voice is the one for them. Plus, voiceactorwebsites.com has other great resources like their practice script library and other resources to help your voiceover career flourish. Don't try it yourself. Go with the pros. Voiceactorwebsites.com, where your VO website shouldn't be a pain in the you-know-what. We are the
are the World Voices Organization, also, also known, known as WOVO. We're the not-for-profit industry association of freelance voice talent. VoiceOver is a complex entrepreneurial business. WOVO is there to promote the professional nature of voice work to the public, to those already established in their voiceover practice, and to those who want to pursue voiceover as a career. Membership benefits include a supportive and creative community, community. a profile and demos on voiceover.biz, our searchable directory of vetted professional voice talent, our exclusive demo player for your personal website, our mentoring program, business resources, and our video library, our annual WovoCon conference, a fun and educational weekend with other members with the, the chance, chance to, to learn, learn and, and network. network, webinars, and great speakers, and weekly social chats with other members around the world. If your world is voiceover, make Wovo part of it. World Voices Organization. We, we speak, speak for those who speak, speak for a living. This is Bill Ratner, and you're enjoying Voice Over Body Shop with Dan Leonard and George Widom. VOBS.TV. All righty. I okay, want to quickly well, close the loop on that last thing. Go for it. One more time, because in our chat, amazing chat room, Jim McNicholas pointed out that to turn off the, uh, you have to uncheck the video edits, follow audio edits function in the video menu of Twisted Wave. If you uncheck that, now you can cut away your audio, copy, paste, mix, paste, and it will not cut the uh, uh, video as well. So thank you, Jim, for mentioning Ooh, that. You. All right. Uh, next week on this very show, which will be April 3rd, we will be live. And of course, you can watch the replay all week. We have another great guest. I got a couple of people lined up and you're going to be thrilled. And of course, we're, we were at VO Atlanta last week, so we asked a whole bunch of people. So we'll be booked up till probably august <laughs> anyway uh we need to thank our donors and you can be a donor too just go to our website uh vobs.tv and there's a there's a button there that says donate now and you can donate and get your name mentioned every week which is i guess okay. hey you never know you never know who's gonna name recognition name. over and over repeated okay well yeah. let's talk about who some of these people are like robert leadham stephen chandler Casey Clack, Jonathan Grant, Tom Pinto, Shelly Avellino, Greg Thomas, and Dr. Voice, Antland Productions, Martha Kahn, 949 Designs, uh, uh, Christopher Epperson, Sarah Borges, Phillips Appear, Brian Page, Patty Gibbons, Rob Ryder, Shauna Pennington Baird, Don Griffith, Trey Mosley, and Diana Birdsall, and, and Sandra, Sandra Manwiller. Manwiller. Thank you, Sandra, and everybody else for all you do to help us maintain the technical magnificence of this show compared to episode one 12 years ago when, when nobody even knew what webcasting was. It was pretty, pretty ugly early days. It was, but it was fun. <laughs> Otherwise, we wouldn't was. keep doing it. Right. Uh, you've got a, a, a uh, you've got a something that's going to expire probably before the end of the week. Yeah, yeah. March 31st is the last chance to get the GTT 2.0 20% off promo at, for all services and webinars at georgethe.tech. GTT, the number two, P-O-I-N-T-O-H, GTT 2.0, 20% off. That ends March 31st. All right. You know, if you didn't get that, you can always watch the replay and just get it from there. Again. <laughs> exactly. Okay, we need to thank our fantastic sponsors who have been with us, many of them, for 12 years from the very first day, like Harlan Hogan's VoiceOver Essentials. Amazing. VoiceOver Extra. Yeah. VoiceOver Extra. John Florian said, who's going to want to watch a TV show about home voiceover studios? Surprise. 12 years, John. <laughs> <laughs> but he stuck with this anyway, because he, he knows a good thing. VoiceOver Extra. Uh, source elements, VOHeroes.com, voiceactor.com, and worldvoices.org, the industry association of freelance voice talent. Join and join us at WovoCon down in Orlando in May because we're going to have a great time down there. Uh, Jeff Holman, thank you for doing a fantastic job in the, in the chat room tonight because we had lots of great questions. And uh, Sumerlino, who's thank you she's there and she gets it done and we really appreciate it uh and of course lee penny just for being lee penny lee come visit us for crying out loud anyway that's going to do it for us this week you know voiceover technology and audio 
eh, it can be kind of tricky. You got to know what you're doing. But it really comes down to the bottom line, and that is if it sounds good. It is good. I'm Deanne Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver. Body Shop. Or VO. B S Tech Talk 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 Tech Talk